the hidden thread running our modern life. From strings of cables thousands of feet beneath the surface of the seas, to a constellation of satellites high above in the sky. In this special report, we zoom in on information superhighways, undersea cables and satellites, how our daily lives rely on them, and how adversarial powers like Russia and China could be poised to disrupt them. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Thousands of miles above and below, our communication courses through satellites and undersea cables. 99% of all uh, communications around the world, for example, go via submarine cables. There's this tendency to believe that we are now reliant solely on satellites for communications, but 1% of the global Communications traffic goes via satellites. So satellites are different, uh, have different values uh, for surveillance and for uh, global positioning and other things. And certainly they, they play a role in, in communications and as backups for submarine cables. That's Greg Copley, president of the International Strategic and Studies Association. He notes how almost all of our modern life runs through these undersea cables. From finance to online shopping, communications and entertainment. It's all powered by over 500 undersea cables spanning half a million miles. Copley notes how that 1% for satellites plays an important role. But first, let's zoom in on undersea cables. Given all the communications humming through these cables, they've been dubbed the world's information superhighways. But in the current world environment, the cable's strategic and military importance has been pushed under the spotlight. Undersea cables are literally crossing no man's land. If you think of the reality of, of human history throughout the millennia, and even today, there's no such thing as international law. There's only your ability to project your power and to defend your assets. And undersea cables are really projections of, of national capabilities and the like. A report by the Center for Strategic and International Studies notes diplomats and military orders pass through classified cables. The report states this reliance on subsea cables to project and sustain power will increase in the future as the military applications of 5G are many in terms of intelligence, command and control or unmanned and autonomous vehicles. And this reliance is only expected to go up. That's driven by the demand for data. The CSIS report notes the demand for bandwidth is expected to double every two years with the shift to 5G and cloud services. But who owns these cables? Uh, today, you've got most major countries involved in uh, laying and controlling cables. And the Chinese regime is no different. Copley notes China controls several important cables through Southeast Asia, which could be turned into tools of destruction in the event of a war. And in the event of a conflict over Taiwan, for example, they could cut off a lot of the communications of places like Vietnam, or the Philippines or Malaysia and the like. Uh, and, and they also have the ability to access and to control undersea cables around uh, Papua New Guinea, and uh, particularly the Solomon Islands and over to Guam. So the ability to disrupt cable traffic is quite uh, easy and quite profound. Given how important these cables are, there's two big vulnerabilities facing them, the physical and the digital. Cables have to go up against Mother Nature, from rocky seabeds to undersea volcanoes, and the occasional shark curious for a nibble. Although shark bites accounted for 0% of cable faults, those fall under the physical side. But the digital side is where the growing concern is. Submarine cables and the satellite communications are critical to the projection of, sub, uh, of cyber warfare to disrupt uh, our societies. That's because when it comes to cyber warfare... Cyber warfare depends on getting into, uh, for example, our electrical grid in uh, which, which uh, governs our life today. We're second by second dependent on the unbroken supply of electricity. 
A report by the Atlantic Council think tank notes the growing risks authoritarian regimes like Beijing and Moscow poses to undersea cables. The report notes the risk is threefold. Firstly, authoritarian regimes, especially in Beijing, are reshaping the Internet's physical layout through companies that control Internet infrastructure to route data more favorably, gain better control of Internet choke points, and potentially gain espionage advantage. Secondly, companies managing undersea cables are getting more and more control over the cables, which raises new levels of operational security risks. And thirdly, the explosive growth of cloud computing has increased the volume and sensitivity of data crossing these cables. If you can get in by whatever means, either by cable or by satellite, into your adversaries' networks, you can disrupt them. And the the People's Republic of China learned that lesson very well. Uh, They learned um, from uh, Gulf War I particularly how easy it was to disrupt an adversary's cable traffic. They learned from the Balkan Wars against Serbia in particular just how easy it is to, to get in and disrupt such systems. That being said, most of the damage so far stems from commercial fishing, shipping and underwater earthquakes. That makes up roughly 150 to 200 subsea cable faults every year. As a quick refresher, there are currently over 500 undersea cables, and most of them retire after two decades in use. As a buffer against all those threats, cables have eight layers, with the innermost being the fiber optics the data is actually transmitted on. The first five are all for protection. Given the increasingly important role undersea cables play, not just for communications but global power projection, there are steps that can be taken to secure them. The capacity to repair and replace submarine cables uh, rapidly is now uh, better than ever. Certainly uh, the, the ability to do that is is rapid. It's still not quick enough. You'd certainly have to have in place uh, satellite and high-frequency t- terrestrial communications. Speaking of those satellites, let's shift our gaze from the bottom of the ocean thousands of miles above to the outermost layers of our atmosphere. As Copley mentioned, 1% of our communications goes through these satellites. But that 1% is important. The most well-known is probably the GPS system. From uh, the, the late 1970s onward, GPS has revolutionized not just navigation for aircraft and ships and the such, but has also become an essential part of the electronic infrastructure of countries around the globe. Uh, By this, I mean the timing signals that GPS uh, broadcasts based on highly accurate clocks helps to run uh, systems as diverse as uh, ATM machines at your bank to uh, the the pumps at your gas station. Uh, uh, It kind of ties all of these systems and and so many others together. That's Rick Fisher, senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center. He highlights the key element GPS provides, timing. GPS receivers decode certain signals that sync up with powerful clocks. And that level of precision is needed in a variety of economic activities around the world, from electrical power grids to financial networks, as well as military operations. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. We hear more from experts, how satellites have a key role to play in our daily lives, despite only making up 1% of our communications, how nuclear weapons tie in, and what steps can be taken to protect our way of life. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music.
master classes, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore Shenyuncreations.com.